Hey, Kev, let's let's follow this trail over here. This looks like there might be something waiting down there. All right. Hey, wait a minute. Do you hear that? Yeah, I thought it was just me. What the heck is that? I don't know what that is. Whoa, do you smell that, too? That's unbelievable. Hey, look. What the? Hey, look, those, tr- those branches are moving over there. What the heck is that? Holy cow, is that what I think it is? Look at that thing. Think it... Oh my god. It's a freaking Sasquatch. Welcome to the Bigfoot Terra in the Woods Sightings and Encounters podcast. I'm your host, W.J. Sheehan. Hello, everybody, and once again, welcome to this, our show of shows. I'm W.J. Sheehan author of the series of books, Bigfoot, Terror in the Woods, Sightings and Encounters, all of which are available at Amazon, volumes one through eight, by the way. Somebody was inquiring whether eight was up, and it is. And they're all in paper book and ebook format. And at Audible, you can listen to volumes one through six in audio format. Also, Do partake of my new series of books, The Exorcists, Creepy Man. (laughs) And there's three volumes, Truth and Lies, Diabolica, and Full Moon. Diabolica is available in Audible. It's the only one right now. The studio is shut down. But all three of the Exorcist series are on Amazon as well. And now, let me welcome in my brother, KJ Sheehan. Kevin, how are you? I'm good. How about you, Bill? Pretty good, Kev. As you know, and the audience does not know, we got hammered pretty good here up on Long Island <laughs> in, New- <laughs> in New York uh, with uh, Tropical Storm or Hurricane Isaias. 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 Why couldn't they pick a, a nice name like Fred? <laughs> exactly. How about Barney? Yeah, they should have named this thing freaking Satan or Lucifer. <laughs> freaking horrible, man. People I mean, just what ca- a weird story, Bill. Like, I'm I'm sitting here down on the coast of North Carolina, the southern coast, and, like, so the, the hurricane made landfall probably about 15 miles away from me as the crow flies. And, you know, we lost power for about 24 hours tops, not that much. Damage. And there you are, like 600 miles away, and you guys get hammered, you know, and not just you guys, but New Jersey, Connecticut, huge trees falling down, people without power for five days. Crazy. Yeah. Well, there's still people here on Long Island that don't have power. And as you know, Kev, uh, folks, we weren't even sure if we were going to pull this off here tonight. Uh, but by a twist of fate, things kind of came back together. I actually had an appointment a few days from now for a technician to come over here and straighten things out. And here we are. But, you know, we were in the outer bands on the easterly side of this storm, which was where all of the heavy wind was. We didn't get a lot of rain. Yeah, but it's still strange, Bill, because it, it made landfall and it stayed over the land. Yeah. You know, so usually these storms fall apart, right? As soon as they around Virginia, once they're over the land, you know, all of that shear, the friction with the land makes them fall apart. But this one didn't. It, it seemed to get stronger when it hit you guys. Yeah, it was it was pretty Very brutal. strange. Yeah, but uh, thankfully it's over. Tremendous amount of cleanup around here. Large trees. Branches, limbs all over the place, power lines down, people running generators. Uh, A little scary, being it's only the first week in August. I mean, I got to tell you, like I've had, uh, I told you earlier in the week that Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel was in my neighborhood again. Like, I don't like that. Okay, Mm -hmm. Jim? I like you. I like the stuff you do at Channel, but it's like the third (laughs) time you've been in my neighborhood in like 12 months. I don't mind if I never see you in the neighborhood again. <laughs> yeah, he's got a flair for drama, too. You know, he's. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's standing, standing there. there. You know, it's hard <laughs> to believe sometimes that he's not uh, leaning, you know, and tripping and stuff like that <laughs> off of his feet. 
<laughs> well, I'll tell you. But here we are, brother. So let's let's Where have at now? it. Thank goodness. What do you got yeah. in our uh, cryptids in the news and other oddities segment for today? Yeah, I got a cool article uh, that's very recent. So it showed up on July 21st of this crazy year, 2020, um, in a periodical called the Herald Journal News. Okay. And uh, you subscribe to that, Bill, the Herald Journal News? (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, where the heck is that from? That's in northern Utah. Northern Utah, famous Herald Journal News. Hey, you know, a lot of the local rags, though, as we call them, uh, have interesting stuff in there. They get some really good local headlines that if you read them locally, uh, there's really some points of interest in them at times, you know? Well, and this one is that way. So uh, I'm not saying I'm going to go subscribe, folks, at the Herald Journal News, uh-huh. but it is well written and uh, a really nice interview with this gentleman. And the, the title of the article, which caught my attention, says "Large Print Sasquatch to Local Hiker." Wow! Yeah. That's interesting. So just less than a month ago, this appeared, and it's written by a gentleman by the name of Sean Harrison, who's a writer on the Herald Journal News. Interesting. So uh, what is he uh, what is he uh, recording about this incident? Yeah. So there's this guy, Matthew Wentz. Uh, WNTZ, and uh, Matthew appears to be quite an outdoorsman. And, um, you know, he came across a large footprint that he thinks was made by a Sasquatch up in what's called the Bear River Range in the northern side of Utah, up near Idaho. Wow. Ever been up around that area? I have. So it's pretty rural. So you're, you're thinking about the area... That borders of Utah, the northern part, borders with both Idaho and Wyoming. Okay. So pretty rural place, right? Yeah, yeah. Any mountain ranges in that? Uh, that I don't know what they're called, but there's definitely mountains all around there. Okay. Yeah, it's typically called the uh, Mount Naomi Wilderness Area. Wow. Is where he was. Okay. And uh, pretty cool, though. And I'll, I'll put up a photo. They, they have a photo of, like, looking into the area where he came across the print. And it's these tall, you know, when I lived in eastern Washington, we call them ponderosa pines. Yeah. These tall, skinny pines, kind of like they probably make telephone poles from. Um, but they're right on top of one another. And it looks exactly like where you would see a Sasquatch. Yeah, you know, and that's that, like... Uh I have an account. Someday we'll get to it. Uh, The woman described the trees as being a slatted fence where you could see the Bigfoot in between the slats walking. That's a good description. It does. It looks like a picket fence of trees. Yeah. And so what was he what was he doing up there? Hunting or hiking? So he was just hiking around and uh, apparently uh, an avid outdoors person. He hikes, hunts and fly fishes time. And, uh, you know, this occurred back in, you know, the stories in uh, the latter part of June occurred on June 5th in this Mount Naomi wilderness area. And uh, Wentz has some good quotes in here. So I'm going to read them to you from the article. Okay. All right. So he says, most people think Sasquatch or Bigfoot is a joke. Uh, Wentz said, I have multiple friends that are older than me that have seen stuff around here. They're credible, but they don't like to talk about it. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And, and he says, you know someone that has seen something and it scares them, frightens them, and then they really don't want to talk about it or to be ridiculed about it. Yeah, you know, it's enough, it's enough to have a frightening experience, but you don't have to relive it with people uh, jibber-jabbering about what an idiot you are. And, uh, you know, like you lost your marbles all of a sudden, you know, on this uh, day in the woods and don't know what happened to you. Yeah. And actually, Bill, I was thinking about it. We're going to get to this a little bit in a much lesser way um, uh, when we do viewer mail. Because, you know, you remember last week I was talking about seeing the UFO out in uh, Southern California, right? Right, right. 
going back about five years ago. And then somebody wrote in saying, um, basically, and we'll do the letter later on, but he said, you know, Kev, it's hard to believe. You don't know that there's a missile range right there, and, you know, they routinely fire off these huge missiles off of the submarines right off of uh, Los Angeles, LAX airport. Of course, he didn't say that, but he did say, like, they routinely do it, you know. Why are you uh, saying this is anything but a missile, you know? And, of course, I'm hoping that the Navy really doesn't fire missiles that close to the commercial air traffic, but that's just yeah, me. Yeah. And, of course, <laughs> of course, it couldn't be that at that time you legitimately saw a UFO. It had to be a missile. No, I know. And I bring it up because, like, you know, the gentleman wrote it, and I have nothing against the gentleman. Like, he's informing me, which is fantastic. But at first, I was feeling a little bit like, oh, wow, he thinks I'm an idiot. You know? <laughs> exactly. And you could see someone like this, you know, that sees, you know, someone sees a Bigfoot or whatever, and then they tell people, and they really believe they saw it. They know it wasn't a bear. You know, they're outdoorsmen. And then they, they get ridiculed for saying, talking about right, what they right. saw. And I remember you talking about this, uh, what you believe was a UFO, how this sighting lasted for how long? Oh, I bet it was 20 minutes. So, you know, uh, you know, I. And I took tons of pictures of it and took of it. And I posted a video some other guy took of it. Um, that was up on uh, YouTube. So that's up on our website, BigfootTerranWoods.com. And listeners, I apologize. The guy uses some foul language at the beginning of the video. I don't condone that, but tells you what he was thinking when he saw yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you t- you take it's yeah. live. You know what I mean? It's live. Yeah, it's live. So there you go. Wow. So uh, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's uh, all good. So so this Wentz, um, he says that he does believe in Bigfoot or Sasquatch, and uh, he says there's definitely some type of hairy, upright walking, ape like creature that dwells in the wilderness. But he didn't see one on this day. Mm -hmm. Um, But he did come across an impression in the ground, and he has a photograph of it, a really good photograph of it, next to his foot. And uh, I'll put that up on our website as well. And it looks pretty compelling, and he's going to talk about it here. Okay. So he says, I'm definitely skeptical of stuff like this. I really believe there is some tall being out there, but I have no idea what it is. It's hard to believe they, these large Bigfoot-like creatures, would be around here because there's still, even though it's rural, there's still so many people and more and more people here going into the mountains compared to 30 or 40 years ago. And he says, a lot of people can't comprehend it, and I don't even want to acknowledge it. I've lived here my whole life, gotten out a lot, so I realize the possibility of potential animals living in places where you might not expect them. There's a lot of room in the mountains. When you go out there during the day, you usually don't see a lot of animals, and they are usually pretty shy. And let's face it, a lot of them are nocturnal. Right. So I think that's pretty cool, you know, where he's talking about like here he is an outdoorsman in northern Utah, which is super rural. And um, he still says, you know, he's out there a lot and he doesn't come across the animals. And again, the animals are generally afraid of humans and generally they have better sense of smell, hearing and maybe even sight as well. So they can avoid us when we're coming down the trail. Yeah, and no doubt, Kev, you know, when I swing my back door open on my house, I have a bird bath and a couple of feeders within, uh, let's just say, 35, 40 feet of the house. Yep. As soon as I turn that knob, everything skedaddles. Yep. Except for a couple of these little chickadees that seem to be like, you know, uh, unafraid of me under any circumstances. Everything else splits. I'm guessing you got a couple of bold squirrels like I have, too. Yeah, and I mean, they might linger for a second, but then they go hopping away. Uh, mine hang around. They're like, hey, what do you want? Oh, okay. Close the door. But, you know, I'm thinking about <laughs> it in terms of animals in the woods, wild animals. Yeah. If they hear you from 70 yards... Uh, oh, they're, yeah. they're already turning around and walking away as far as I'm concerned. And you can't see them in right. the woods, right? I mean, All no they way. have to do is get a whiff of you 
or hear you, and they're already leaving the area. And again, even if they stand still because they hear you or get a whiff of you, you probably no. can't see them. You know, your eye is trained to see the well, motion. Well, right? think about what you were just describing, um, these stands of telephone pole ponderosa pines. If something was back right. in, in a forest that's that tight, uh, a couple of hundred feet, you're probably not going to see it. Oh, no doubt about it. Wow. No doubt about it. Yeah. Um, so he says, you know, he, he found this large track. Uh, it was a bright, sunny day. And he's not specific about the exact location, but he says it's north of a place called Green Canyon. And it's very close to a, a mountain called Mount okay. Elmer. And he says he hiked about four and a half miles and got off the trail he was on to check out a ravine that he had not noticed before. Snow was melting in the rocky terrain, and he said that it was pristine wow. and nice. You know, it almost makes you feel like you're somewhere else, Wentz said. I wish more would see these areas, would have more respect for the wilderness if they did. And as he was walking along, avoiding off from the snow, an impression on the ground caught his attention for a moment. He said he walked past it and thought it was kind of weird looking. I didn't think much about it. I walked farther up and looked around the area. There was snow runoff that was causing some small waterfalls. And after taking in the scenery up there, he started to walk back. And this time, the impression, you know, so he's coming from the other direction. He said the impression jumped out at him. Wow. He said, when I was walking back and saw the track or impression, it looked different from that angle. I thought, wow, that's really weird. I'm looking at the depth and how it was and how long it was. I thought it was probably older because I could, I could tell there were pebbles on it. I'm guessing there was snow on the ground to make the impression because the ground up there is pretty hard. You usually can't see tracks of the bigger animals. And we've heard that before, Bill, you know, where people are walking along and they see a track, but yet their foot isn't making a track. So what is he? Th Cause is he thinking enough. that? The track was made and then snow covered it and it was like preserved there? Or that it made through the snow. Oh, okay. He was crunching. You know what I mean? And then the snow melted away because he's got snow melt all around Okay, him. okay. But he looked at this footprint and he's, he has some photos of it, some good photos. And then he said that as he looked closer at it, he noticed the possible toe prints. So kind of like a barefoot human, you could see it. Yeah. And he's six foot three, and he explained that a mountain lion track is not much bigger than the palm of his hand. Mm. And the black bear tracks that he's seen are not any bigger than his overall hand and his fingers, uh -huh. you know. So he said, you know, that eliminates any of the comic there that it could possibly be a bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said he wears a size 12 shoe, so he's a big guy. And uh, he said, you know, there's no bear around that would make an imprint of a size 12 shoe, which I agree. You know, even the grizzlies that I saw up in Alaska last summer, um, I saw some of their fresh tracks right on the beach when we were out there with them. They weren't as big as a size 12 shoe. Yeah. You know, they're just different. You know, they're not human like at all. He's a guy, too, though. You know, he, he realizes even whatever experience level he has, he's some type of woodsman. And he's, yeah. he's already making rational decisions relative to what he's seen, uh, what he knows, and his own uh, uh, appendages, his hand, his foot, relative to what he's looking at now. And he's, he's kind of going down the checklist of what could this be and what is it not. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, there's credibility all just leaking all over the place here about what the man is saying. You know, it's just, oh, yeah, and he's out there, you know, in the wilderness just taking a little hike like he always does, so he knows his stuff. Yeah. And it's interesting, Bill, he talks about the fact with his backpack on, he's over 250 pounds, and his feet couldn't make any impression on the same ground. Yeah. So he figures this thing would have had to been about 700 pounds. To make a half inch deep impression like yeah, that. Yeah, whatever the weight would be, if 250 does nothing, 
Does doubling it make a quarter of an inch and tripling it? Yeah. Well, yeah, and it's not even that. It's worse, not to get all uh, engineering on us here. Um, you know, as you know, it's my nature. But if if the foot of this creature is twice as big, has twice as much air, then not only does it have to, you know, weigh a lot more than him, it's got to weigh even more than that to put that whole surface area that far right. into the ground. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, it's like a snowshoe. Exactly. Like us wearing a snowshoe. If anything, the larger shoe at the same weight would uh, have no chance. Less. Yeah, Yeah. less. Make less of an impact. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, he talks about the fact, he says, uh, you know, I've had some scary encounters out there, and I've definitely had those, he calls it the sixth sense moment. But he said this didn't happen mm-hmm. this time. So he doesn't think the creature was right around him. Um, and he says, it's interesting, he said he is licensed and carries a firearm and didn't have any fear. So I'm guessing Wentz carries more gun than he thinks he's going to need. <laughs> I love it, Mr. Wentz. I love it. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> And uh, Wentz talks about the fact that um, he, he, you know, the television show Finding Bigfoot has been up there in the valley near his house a few years ago. He knows lots of people that have reported sightings uh, in and around uh, North Ogden and Logan Logan Canyon uh, and the Wellsville's up there in Utah. Um, So it is a bit of a hotbed, he mentions. Well, you know. I don't recall a lot of times in those shows, they don't tell you exactly where they would go. And you can't, you know, the state they're in, uh, but they don't yeah, uh, yeah. say, you know, today we're going to be right here, you know. No, no, no. Yeah. So it's it's I always have my map out, you know, my Google Maps out when I'm researching this stuff and looking at the photographs from the area and stuff like that. If I haven't been to the area myself. So. Super cool. You know, he he ends the article by talking about the fact, you know, he's he says that Native Americans, you know, in this area, they've been talking about Sasquatch for hundreds of years. He said it's not a joke. There is something out there. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. You know, and uh, the fellow who wrote the article said that he knows a couple of people yeah. that have been freaked out by something. Yeah. And uh, he knows it of them that they were scared and just oh, yeah. choose not to talk about it, you know? Yeah, and they're also outdoorsmen. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of kind of frightening. If it was a bear, I guarantee you they would have talked about it. Sure, they know right. there. I mean, you know? If somebody was uh, bluff-charged by a big bear or something, they would have said, you can't believe what happened to me today because – they're not a f- yeah, you should have seen this bear. It's the biggest one I ever exactly. saw. They wouldn't, they wouldn't hesitate to tell a bear story. But it's yeah. that freaky uh, Bigfoot uh, fear or it's like almost like an anxiety takes a hold of people where they don't want to discuss it. It's interesting talking about bear. So in this article, um, I didn't cover this part, but it is interesting. He mentioned uh, when he's talking about the size of the print and the depth of the print, he said you'd need something the size of old Ephraim. Oh, the name. Yeah. To make a track like that. And I didn't know old Ephraim. Well, Do you know, wasn't you know that, that story? That the giant. Tame bear that was used by Hollywood in some uh, shows? Well, see, I didn't even know that, but I did Google it, and it's some giant bear that lived out there. So maybe they did it, end up using it in Hollywood. Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking of, uh, was it Grizzly Adams? Grizzly Adams, yeah, something like that. Maybe. Or some other show where they used to be like wrestling with this bear that was obviously trained. Yeah, but he, Grizzly Adams would be wrestling with the big bear. Yeah, he was a big mother boy, that bear, though, you know. And, <laughs> oh, I thought uh, you were saying Grizzly Adams was a big Well, he mother. was a big mother, too. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so that's the article this week. You know, again, it's uh, it's not creepy. I think it's just interesting, and it's so recent. I, I wanted to cover it. Again, it, it was in the journal... Uh, July 21st of this horrible year, 2020. Yeah, and you know what, Kev? It's just a continuum of the vast data stream associated with Bigfoot uh, in North America. 
Just Absolutely. little dribs and drabs here and there, confirmations, and then the and then the the discovery in this print creates an article and more commentary based on him seeing the print. No print, there would be no Herald article, and we wouldn't be discussing it. Exactly. So it's just uh, it's all grist for the mill, as I say again and again. And speaking of <laughs> grist for the mill. What do you think I have in my possession today, Brother Kevin? A casting of a giant foot from Utah. <laughs> when I say possession, I'm talking about written word. What do you uh, think I'm going I to discuss? A, I bet it's a creepy account with a hairy <laughs> man. You have failed, brother. What I have here <laughs> is the first Yowie account. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. We. And uh, the following account is the first that I've received in regards to Australia's Bigfoot type creature, which we know as the Yowie. And this is what Betty Lancaster saw while hiking in the Kimberley. Kev, when I say the Kimberley, does that ring a bell from you, for you in Oz? It does. I've I've heard of it. I don't think I've been to the Kimberly. Uh, okay, and obviously there. I haven't been there, but this is where she was. Now listen to this. Yeah, I would cool. first like to thank you, Bill, for what you are doing with your Bigfoot Terror in the Woods Sightings and Encounters podcast. It's very informative as well as being entertaining while giving someone such as myself a platform whereby I can share what I have seen. In the summer of 2015, I was on one of my many hikes in a region of Australia known as the Kimberley, more specifically, Winjana Gorge. My friend Lyle and I had been hiking for several hours, and at some point, a loud kerplunk type of splash had occurred in some water that we were passing by. It was the type of splash that would occur from a rock or something coming down from above would make, complete with the water splashing up in a column and rings running out in the water after the impact was through. We couldn't understand at the time how this could have taken place, and yet it most certainly had. We were standing deep within the gorge with towering jagged faced walls rising up both behind us as well as across the gorge in front of us, both of which have a fairly robust buffer of trees at their bases. There was not another soul in there with us at the time, and we hadn't seen anyone in over two hours. We were both too far from the wall for anything to have fallen from the top. And Lyle had said, rather astutely, that perhaps a bird had flown overhead, dropping whatever it was clutching into the water, and we just hadn't seen it. I remember at the time thinking how smart he was, inasmuch as I hadn't even given such a scenario a thought and we kept hiking. These walls, by the way, are exceedingly tall, and here and there you can see a plant or two growing on the sides of them. How the seeds get there and how they can grow in a rock face, I don't know, but they do. It was about 45 minutes after the rock or whatever had splashed that the two of us had sat down for a break. We were sitting on two boulders with Lyle facing the gorge's wall while I was facing the interior of the gorge. At some point, Lyle had been sitting rather quietly with his gaze fixated above us looking at the wall. He had said nothing when I asked him, Are you looking at something? He said to me, I'm not sure. I thought I saw something peeking over the brim of the gorge, 
but I haven't seen anything since. I have been concentrating on the area for the past few minutes. It was then that I said, what do you mean something peeking over the top of the gorge? Do you mean a person? He then followed by saying, I can't say what it was that I saw. I just briefly caught a glimpse of what seemed to be dark coloration, and when I looked, it was gone. We had once again begun our hike, having yet again come upon another spot where there was somewhat of a small lake or a pond-like area that was formed within the gorge, and kerplunk, the exact same type of resonating splash that had occurred earlier had just happened again. This time, I caught the entire event out of my peripheral vision, having seen what was most definitely a rock coming down from above and impacting the surface of the water. This was nothing that a bird had dropped. Of that, I can most certainly attest. The two of us turned, looking upward at the same time. We stood there for what must have been 15 minutes or so, gazing at the gorge's top, only resting our necks for a few brief moments as we did so. I remember saying to Lyle, do you think that someone is up there toying with us and having a good laugh at our expense? To which Lyle said, heck, anything's possible. The two of us had stopped looking up and were now standing by the water's edge, facing where the rock had entered. When Lyle looked down and said, What's this? This, of which he spoke, were a number of large footprints in the wet soil. Similar to those of a human being, only greatly exaggerated in their dimensions. They were about 16 or 18 inches in length being complete with a full set of five toes like that of a human, but they were much wider and longer. As we looked at them, we could see that whatever had made the tracks had come out of the trees at the gorge's base, come to the water, and walk back into the trees, so we went to investigate. No sooner had we begun to enter the very fringe of the trees than did yet another rock come splashing down in the water behind us. We jumped out of the trees to look at the water. From our position, the trees were behind us now and were obscuring the lower portion of the wall from our view. Because of this, the first 50 feet or so were blocked from our sight by the angle from which we were looking with the trees in front of us. Our eyes moved collectively up to the top of the wall, down the side, and back to the water. At some point, I had spun back around to once again look at the wall before Lyle had, and there it was. Climbing up the face of the gorge was a broad, hair-covered, gorilla-type creature, which was scaling the wall at a rapid pace in front of us. It had to have been in the trees when we had begun to enter them and was now making its exit, having distracted us with the rock. This thing was climbing a wall that was hundreds of feet high like a fit man could run up a flight of stairs. It was moving hand over foot with what seemed to be reckless abandon and we were seeing it with our own eyes. As it reached about three quarters of the wall's height, we saw another creature of the same ilk peer out over the top of the precipice looking downward at the one that was climbing. It was then that Lyle had said as we stood watching this spectacle that the one on top must have been distracting us with the rocks the entire time in order to allow the one within the gorge to move undetected by us. To me, it all made perfect sense and I couldn't believe it. This creature had made it up the entirety of the wall's face in maybe 90 seconds, a feat which in and of itself would more than likely have taken a man hours to perform with climbing gear. It cleared the top edge and was gone. Lyle had said that we just saw two yowies, a fact of which there was no denying. 
When I had first seen it on the rock face, it was already about 75 feet from the ground. And it had to have been six or seven feet tall as it was clinging to the face. Its arms, when they were extended above it, seemed to be two-thirds of its height in length. And the power and agility which it exhibited as it climbed was incredible, as it moved its arms in a ridiculously rapid fashion. It seemed to have an inexhaustible supply of both stamina and energy, having not so much as paused for a split second before it reached the top of the gorge. My only regret was that we hadn't caught a photo of them, having only brought our backpacks with water and some food along with us. Life can and does throw some funny things our way, and this was the absolute topper for the two of us. I can assure you that many a hearty chuckle has been had at our expense upon sharing the events which the two of us had witnessed on that day with all of our friends, co-workers, and relatives. But what we saw that day was as real as the nose on your face, and we had witnessed it with our own eyes in broad daylight within the confines of the Winjana Gorge. I now realize for myself as well as Lyle, what it is to be a witness and not to be believed. Why people cannot and will not accept what is truth, I do not have the answer to that. But when you have witnessed something of this ilk and magnitude for yourself, it most certainly opens your eyes in a new and magnificent way to the world in which we live. After all, They are simply another aspect of this grand creation, which we call our home. Bravo. What do you think of that, actually? That is good stuff, Bill. So, you know, from the description, this gorge, it, it must be like a miniature Grand Canyon or something, right? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Uh, carved out high walls, some water inside, uh, a little tree growth along the banks as far as they said. At one point she said there was like a buffer of about 50 feet of trees between where they were and the, and the base of the wall, uh, which she actually said had kept them from seeing the thing initially making its initial ascent. Uh, because of the angle and I guess the height of the trees blocking their view. Yeah, and again, we hear the description of these creatures like being able to scale, you know, vertically at an unbelievable pace. Yeah, well, it's just like, uh, you know, I mean, I've seen uh, spider monkeys uh, and other creatures go up a tree like it was freaking boop, 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 and they're gone, you know. Yeah, uh, it's like they don't even think about it. There's no danger. There's no hint of I can't do it. I'm tired. Uh, they just yeah. shake, rattle, and roll right up the tree, and then they just sit there, like you know, oh, okay, I did it. You know. And I love the quote at the end. You know, now I understand uh, what it is like to be a witness that cannot be believed. Well, you know, we'll hear this again a thousand times, ten thousand oh, times. Yeah. You know. Uh, chuckled, laughed at, ridiculed, co-workers, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw two yowies. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I like her. Uh, I like her thoughts about the possibility that the one up top, having seen them, was trying to raise a distraction, uh, knowing that it's compadre was down there with them and trying to give it a break to kind of like get out without them seeing it, you know? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's yeah, pretty cool. Freaking weird stuff, man. Yowie Kazowie in Oz. Yowie! <laughs> Gotta love the Yowies. I gotta check out this Kimberly area and uh, what they call it? The Wind Janner Gorge? Uh, wind? Let me look at the spelling here just for a second. I want to say it was W-I-N-J like Jack, A-N-A, Winjana Gorge. Winjana. Yeah, and I haven't heard she of that says one. it's in this place known as the Kimberly. 
I can't so, believe. You know, if any uh, of our friends from Mars out there, and we know we have many, uh, know anything about this area or can give us any more details uh, about the Kimberly and or the Windjana Gorge, certainly reach out to us. Uh, we- yeah, yeah, yeah. tell us on. what you know, what you think, and uh, we'll kick it around. Yeah, fantastic. Super cool. Yeah, That's I love this account. stuff, you know, and I mean the uh, – the listener, uh, the listeners, you know, there are people out there that are seeing things. That's the bottom line. Well, and I can't get uh, me enough. Yowie! <laughs> <laughs> so what do we got today, yeah, brother? Any of all... listener mail. So uh, okay. I think it was our last podcast, Bill. You talked about the uh, a counter in the book called The Long Walk, right? Oh, yeah. That was the uh, the four men that made it out of eight into uh, northern India, and right as they were leaving the Himalayas, they saw two Yeti. Yeah, yeah. So so Dave writes in, and I'm not sure where Dave is from, but uh, he says, just to let you and your listeners know, The Long Walk has been made into a movie. I watched it on Netflix like five years ago, but can you believe they left out the best part? I didn't know about the encounter they had until now listening to your podcast. Even so, the movie was really good. I couldn't stop thinking about it for days after watching it. The movie is titled The Way Back, and it was made in 2010. Wow. Well, no shock, Kev, right? Uh, And by the way, the second to last chapter of the book uh, was named Strange Creatures. And that's where the account came from about the two Yetis and everything we had spoken about. But, Kev, once again, not too strange, is it, that they had to leave that part out of what was a fantastic (laughs) human interest book and story that was truthful. Yeah. And equally as truthful was their sighting of two Yetis leaving the Himalayas, and they have to leave that out of the movie. Yeah, I agree. Unbelievable, man. I agree. Yeah, I mean, who is, you know... Why is it that everybody's sitting down in some boardroom uh, drawing up a movie or, or whatever? In this case, it was a movie. Has to make the decision, yeah, well, you know, we better leave that out. Yeah. So, uh, and it was equally as truthful uh, and part of the story as was uh, chapter one, verse one. Yep. Just incredible. So there you have it. Once again, our audience coming through with the the movie that was made, and admitting he had no idea that the Strange Creatures Trapter was even part of the book. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. All right. So our next letter comes in from Ricky, and Ricky is in Birmingham in the UK. Yeah, Ricky. And then Ricky writes... Well, first off, I have to say the message. He says, hey, WJ and your bro... <laughs> Yeah, but didn't he follow up? <laughs> but then yeah. he writes, no, then he writes, only kidding, yeah, Kev. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Ricky. And Kev, I got to say something to Ricky and a bunch of these other blokes over there. Don't be making <laughs> fun of my Brit accent. <laughs> well, here you go. He actually says, Birmingham in the UK is where Ozzy Osbourne is Big from. Big deal. And he says, if you could do his accent, I'd be mightily impressed. So the gauntlet is thrown down, Bill. All he sounds like a man eating a bag of marbles. Marbles, (laughs) I say, marbles. Well, what what are you, Sharon? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it, Kev. You got it. I've heard him talking, and I was like, I don't know how he could ever sing the songs he sung, like Fairies Wear Boots, with the voice he's got. I, I, I don't even know where that comes from. I think, yeah, I think he was uh, more together back yeah, then. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> just remember. A little, little too much fun in yeah, Ozzy's life. Just remember, life. fairies wear boots and you've got to believe me. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, Ricky writes, with all the encounters you and your contributors describe from all over the world with the red-brown hair color, do you guys think that Bigfoot-type creatures across the world might have a common ancestor? 
would love to know your thoughts. And he says, keep up the great work. I found your podcast a few weeks ago as a Bigfoot follower from afar. I've gone through them very quickly. They are fantastic boys. My favorite WJ saying is... The chance is slim to none, and Slim has just <laughs> left. <laughs> I love it, I tell you. And he says, you both crack me up. Keep squatching. P.S. I bought two paperbacks, but may move on to the audiobooks as I drive around a lot. Keep, Keep them coming. Them coming. So what do you think, Bill, of a common ancestry? Well, it's tough to say, man, because, uh, you know, you have... You have a few of these things that are, are, are described slightly different, differently uh, as far as height and weight. Uh, there may be similarities, uh, but I don't know, Kev. It's, it's difficult to say. And the widespread, you know, to me it's like uh, lions or tiger, or the cat family, right? There's a lot of different cats, everything from a bobcat uh, to a lion, a full-fledged lion, the tigers, you know, the Bengal tigers, the cougars. Yep. They're all cats. They all seem to do the same thing uh, as far as what kind of food they eat, how they attack, their speed, their strength, their agility. But they're all different, but they're all in the cat family. Yep, no doubt about it. I mean, I I look at, you know, I of course I did a podcast on uh Gigantopithecus, you know, the historic ape from uh Asia. And you know, it's hard not to think that some of these aren't somehow related back to uh Gigantopithecus, you know, but and I also think the different sizes are not that shocking, you know, cuz it's kind of they evolve. These creatures evolve right. into whatever the environment they're in. Look at the in. human beings, right, Kev? You know. I mean, when I'm in the exactly. hospital, we have people from all over the world working over there. Uh, you know, we have people from down in, like, let's just say Guatemala, uh, Peru. A lot of the uh, women from that area are very small in stature. It's not uh, something unusual. In fact, it's the norm. Uh, and then you get people from other areas that seem to be more large or with more blonde hair and blue eyes than brown hair and brown eyes, you know. And it's just, uh, and we're all human beings, right? So I, I can't, I can't discount the yep. fact that globally this creature is being seen, and there's similarities yet dissimilarities, you know. Uh, the one thing I hear again and again, which I can't avoid, is the dark brown with uh, auburn or red highlights as far as fur color. We've heard that. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a hundred yeah. times. Uh, so, oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. What's no going on there? I don't know. Common ancestry? Perhaps. I'm with you with that gig Gigantopithecus thing. Uh, it's got to be some type of relationship with spin-off yeah. from that giant ape uh, to these creatures. Yeah, that yeah thing but was some like people are claiming that what they've seen now is 10 or 12 feet tall. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, depending on where you are. Right, the ones folks see in Southeast yeah, Asia seem to be a I little smaller. Yeah, I don't know what the relationship is of that, uh, with that, yeah. but who knows, man. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Very cool. All, All right. right, well, we're going back to the U.K., Bill. To Darren, and Darren, uh, I think, you know, he's written us before. This is a good article, though. So he says, hello, WJ and Kevin, and he puts, <laughs> insert Bond music here. <laughs> ding, da, ding, 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 Hold on a minute, Bill. Uh, hello there, Miss Moneypenny. You remember Darren Ready wrote to, in and he wanted to know why I was traveling around so right. much. Perhaps I was. All right, Darren. So he says, there I was, washing dishes, listening to your podcast, and my email gets a mention from Kevin. Put a huge smile on my face. Thank you both. Yeah. So there you go, Darren. Uh, Darren. And he says, as you know, I have nothing but fuzzy feelings for you both. But WJ, your Welsh Liverpool accent <laughs> is not quite authentic. 
How do you know it's a Welsh Liverpool accent, Darren? <laughs> and by the way, Darren, you couldn't be a James Bond because you're washing dishes. <laughs> <laughs> So he says, he he gives some advice, though, Bill. He says, within 10 miles of my house, two of the best actors of all time were born. (laughs) Richard Burton, roughly six miles down the road in a village called Pontry Divin. Uh Luckily, he gave me the pronunciation. (laughs) And nine miles away, Sir Anthony Hopkins in a place called... Ty Bach, I uh-huh. think. I mean, he gave me the pronunciation. I still don't know how to say yeah. it. Yeah. So he says, listen to an interview with either one of these fellas, and you will have the accent in my area. Again, thank you for the mention. Going through some rough times personally at the moment, your show, among others, is helping distract me. Well, we're happy to help you, Darren, <laughs> and thanks for the note, and thanks for having some fun with us. You know, Kim. One of the funniest things to me is, you know, some people are a little sinister with what their comments. And, and, you know, so many people comment about the way I talk and the words I say. You know, I got people like uh, uh, English lit professors, you know, telling me I pronounce the word (laughs) saw improperly. You know, and, and now we got Darren telling me about his Liverpool accent. (laughs) <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and little does he know that actually riles me up to do it more. It's very disturbing to me. <laughs> it's all grist for That's the mill, Darren. And what did Anthony Hopkins call her, Charisse? <laughs> that that's was a creepy, creepy man, Hannibal. Oh my God. Remember when he had that guy bugged up at the kitchen table and he had a little piece of his skull taken off so he could fillet his brain? Oh, my God. I read all of those books. I read the whole series, you know, The Silence of the Lamb, Hannibal, The Red Dragon. Yeah, and the books are super creepy, even creepier than the movies. Yeah, it was just like, whoa, man. But uh, anyways... Mm. Thank you, Darren. You know, we we kid with you, and I know you know that, and everybody else uh, knows we like to kid around here and have a good time, and uh, that's what we do. Yeah, so now we're going to go to that email. There's no name or location on this email. It's kind of a a cryptic Yahoo address, so... Uh uh, and and uh, maybe that's why this story came in. Uh, this email came in that way. It says, <laughs> Kev, just listen to your latest podcast, Terror in the Woods 58. I'm laughing because you're not aware that the Pacific Coast Missile Test Range is off the coast of California. In November 2015, there were missiles launched. Launching west. Yes, we shoot missiles on the weekend and at night. That was my job in the Navy Submarine Force. It was my job to maintain and launch Trident missiles when called upon to do so. I've launched several missiles from the coast of California. You probably caught the boost phase of the launch. If you paid attention, apparently he thinks I didn't pay attention, Uh, you can sometimes catch all three stages of the missile. Sometimes you find out what you don't know. Hmm. Hmm. When those solid propellant rocket motors ignite, they are bright and loud. Anyway, now you know what you saw. Keep your eye on the woods, and I guess the sky, too. I like the Minerva story. I watched a documentary. And he writes, P.S., sometimes you have to believe what the government tells you. And I I appreciate the input, and I do know the Pacific Coast Missile Test Range is over there, and it could very well be a Trident missile. I just think it's odd to be shooting missiles right off of LAX, as a frequent flyer, and this one was heading south to north. Yeah. So I saw it 15 minutes coming up from San Diego way, and if you look on Google in that time frame, you'll see people that saw it down in Tijuana as well. So uh, it was coming south to north, but I appreciate the input, and it's good email, and uh, I also like the fact that you like the Minerva story and that you watched the documentary as well. Yeah, it's also good that people are listening to make yeah. a comment. Absolutely. You know, it's not like they just drank a, a, a bottle of Ripple and a pa- passed out <laughs> in a beat-up old recliner that they dug up on the side of the street. 
Hey, wait a minute. I'm sitting in a beat up. <laughs> and I just finished the bottle ripple, you, you brown eyed <laughs> creep. All right. And our last email, believe it or not, Bill, we're going back to the UK. Whoa. This is Matthew. And I, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. He says hello from Liverpool in the UK. Ah, Liverpool. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I have a soft spot in my heart for Liverpool. I know. And Bill, is Ringo the best drummer? <laughs> don't start with that again, Kevin. Ringo's not even the best drummer in the Beatles. <laughs> so uh, Matthew writes, I've been listening to the podcast for a couple of years now, and I purchased a couple of your books from Amazon. Really enjoy the show, and the books are fantastic. It's funny, but when I'm reading them, I always have your voice in my head speaking the words. Yeah, That's cool. so far. And he says, your <laughs> <laughs> he says, your show is a light in the dark at this crazy time. Keep up the good work, my friends. I am recently carrying around with me 15 packets of Wrigley's Extra Gum. <laughs> he says, I am always carrying more gum <laughs> than I think I need. As in the UK, we cannot carry guns around. So more gum <laughs> we'll have to do. That's awesome, Matthew. Hey, if you can't carry more gu gun than you think you can need, at least carry 15 <laughs> packs of gum. Oh, Maybe a slingshot. God. Another guy that couldn't be James Bond because he's not carrying a gun. <laughs> what are you going to do with 15 <laughs> packs of Wrigley's bloke? No Beretta, PPK, yeah, or whatever. Oh, Walter, PPK, right? Get something. <laughs> A watch that uh, does something <laughs> tricky. Awesome, Bill. So that's it for the viewer mail. Um, I just want to tell our listeners, thank you so much for the great reviews. Um, if you haven't left us a five-star review let, yet on your favorite podcast player, please do it now. And even if you've already left us a five-star review, heck, leave us another one from your favorite podcast player. It's really important, folks, that you do that because your five-star reviews bring more listeners to the podcast, and that allows WJ and I to increase the quality of the podcast over time. So thank you very much, and continue to be safe in this crazy COVID world yeah, that we're living Yeah, and remember, folks, uh, go out there and buy one of my books. You'll be doing me a favor. And keep in mind, if you're still disobeying the orders to shelter and stay in place. Or if you've decided you're bored and want to go into the Kimberly Gorge, always carry more gun than you think you're gonna need. Sleep tight. <laughs>